Hey, this is Al Crouch with Indiana Lazy Bushman. Today, uh, we got our knife done yesterday, so today we're going to make a leather sheath for it. So I'm going to cover right now all the tools you're going to need to make the leather sheath. First off, you're going to need some kind of clamp, whether it's clothespins, paper clips, or just some type of a clip to clip your leather as you're gluing it. You, I use, I like to use contact cement. That's my favorite to use because it dries quickly. You can use goop if that's all that's in the store. It takes a little while, longer to dry. This, you need uh, waxed single strand artificial sinew, a glover's needle, a 564 drill bit, a Sharpie's marker, some sort of drill, and I like using medical scissors. Medical scissors cut through the leather really, really good. And then you're going to need a spacer embosser, or as I call a spur. And what this does is this marks your leather to show where your holes are to be drilled for your stitching to go through and will make it look like it's been stitched by a sewing machine. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, after you're done with your knife, you're going to need to make up a template. So I always make a paper template up when I'm doing this. This is what my template looks like. Then I've transferred this to a more permanent template that I use all the time. So I've went ahead and already drawn it out on my piece of leather that I'm going to use and this is what it looks like. So let's get started. I'm going to go start cutting on it. As you can see these leather scissors, or these medical scissors, excuse me, eat right through the leather like it ain't nothing. Alright, now that we've got the leather cut out, we're going to place our spacer here. Now the reason I got a full length spacer is in case you want to make this leather sheath without a place to put a ferrocene rod. So now that I got the spacer in here, I'm going to need to cut this spacer to make it even with the leather. So we're going to mark that and glue it and then we're going to clamp it down. Now I got my spacer cut, I'm going to apply some of the contact cement to it on the back side. Just make sure you cover it really good. And you got time for you got time to work with this stuff before it sets up hard. Just make sure you get all your stuff in place where it needs to go. And then I'm going to start clamping it. Alright, now that we got this clamp, we'll give about 10 minutes to dry. Alright, now that our, our uh, piece is dried in there, we need to bring the top part down and glue it. Once again, I'm just going to add a liberal amount of cement. Fold your leather over. Don't worry about everything being super even. We'll take care of that here in a little bit. Alright, now that we got that clamped down, we're going to give this time to dry and then I'll get back to you. 
All right, now that our leather's dried together, we're going to use our spacer embossing tool, or the spur that I call it, to mark my leather. You want to push down really, really hard on this so that it makes the marks in the leather. You can uh, take and uh, mark your leather so that everything's perfectly even if you want to. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but that's what it looks like when you're ready to drill it out. Now I'm going to start drilling it. I got this old stump here so that way I'm not drilling holes through my, uh, through my table. Something I didn't cover was uh, this embossing tool you can buy from uh, Tandy Leather or a leather supply store. Probably ordered them online cheaper than what I paid for it. I got it at a hobby shop. That's where I picked mine up at. So anyway, we got it, we got it drilled out, as you can see. How nice and straight that looks. So we're ready to start sewing. We're going to sew from the back side first. You want to Run your needle through the back side because this is the side we're going to tie off on and it, you don't see the back side of it. So, run our stitching through. Keep your stitching nice and tight. You can see how quickly the stitching goes on this. I mean, it goes really nice and smooth being able to drill them holes out. All right, once you've stitched all the way down to the end with your first set of stitching, you're going to turn around and stitch it all the way back. This is called double stitching. And you can see here, looks like a sewing machine did it. You can see the gap between the single set and the double set. So all you're going to do, once you get to the end, is start restitching it all the way back around until you get to the end. So I'll get back to you as soon as we get it done. Alright, we got our stitching done. This is what it looks like. It looks like it's been done with the sewing machine. We're ready to put our belt loop in. Now for the belt loop, I do not glue it. I get it on there even. And then I put my clips on it. This holds the leather while I'm marking it for my stitching. So. Alright. Now I've got the belt loop clip. We're going to do one more thing to this. I'm going to take some decorative punches. And I'm going to make decorative punches down along this. Now you can do this on vegetable tan or already dyed leather. And the way to do this, get yourself some water. Wet your leather down. Once the leather's wet, we'll start making our decorative punches. Now you can see what this looks like if he zooms in on it. 
and once we get this done and this sewed, I'll get back to you. All right, here's the knife sheath done. As you can see, the tool, tool marks that I put on it of the decorative tool marks. This is ready now. You can see the uneven parts on it. We're going to take this on the belt sander and we're going to even this out now. So let's go into the belt sander. I've ran this across the belt sander and you can see how nice and even everything is. Now we'll take it back in and I'll show you what your next step. Alright, the next step is you need to treat this leather with waterproofing. I like to use pure mink oil. I don't use the mink oil with the silicone in it because I worked in paints for years painting auto vehicles and stuff and silicone after a period of time will cause your leather to crack because it will not let the leather breathe so I try to find uh, you can some people use wax lard tallow um, but make sure it's in the pure form so I'm gonna wax this up real quick it's gonna make the leather a little bit darker so that's how we're gonna waterproof our leather and just rub it in real good that's all you need to do and you'll treat it every once in a while with leather uh, waterproofing. One coat ain't going to do it for the duration of your knife, but it'll keep your leather in very good shape while you're out trekking through the woods. I just put it on real generous and rub it in really good. Okay, now you can see it darkened that leather up and that's that's what it does when you put it in it'll dry it'll dry dark. Now the second step in this is waterproofing your knife blade. This blade is made of high carbon if it was made of stainless it, it, it's not going to matter that much if it's made of stainless but in high carbon if you have a leather sheath and you're keeping it in the leather sheath it will draw moisture and it will cause your knife to rust. So I like using, you could use the mink oil if you wanted to, you can use Vaseline is another one that I've used in the past when I've been wading in water I'll Vaseline my knife blade up real good so the water can't penetrate. I make my own wax and lard mixture for waterproofing my knives and my hawks and my axes and stuff because this goes on real thick and it stays on it. It takes a lot to wear it off. So this is the last step for you to do with your knife. You want to get it all over the metal really really good. Whichever way you do, if, it, uh, um, if you use uh, the mink oil you're going to have to pull it out and do it every once in a while. This wax will stay on it and this lard will stay on it until I use it. Now that's what it looks like with the, the lard and the wax all over it. So there you have it from start to finish, knife sheath and blade made from a file. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this segment of me building file knife and sheath from start to finish, join me on my next build when I use all the modern day equipment with steel that I order from a steel mill. It comes to me in bars that look like this and we use do stop removal. These are just a few of the knives that I built. This is a Capheart knife 5 inch and 4 inch and some other various varieties of knives that people's asked me to build and the sheaths they've asked me to build. But in this next build we're going to build this knife here. This is the KG Skinner 
and KG Hunter. This is called the KG Combo. A friend of mine designed these knives, and this is what we're going to build in the next build. So stay tuned.